One of the things that can be encouraging for us as we try to live out as Christian disciples is to take comfort in the lives of the saints. Uh, the saints were real people. They had real life struggles like we do. And while I like to regard them as being members of the hall of fame of holiness, the trials that they endured can serve to give us hope for our own lives. Uh, so many of the saints struggled with faith, they were saddled with weaknesses, and even had doubts at times. Uh, we know, for example, that St. Peter, our first pope, struggled with faith throughout the Gospels. It's common knowledge that St. Mother Teresa of Calcutta had real doubts at times as a result of serving in some of the most poverty-stricken neighborhoods in the world. But in spite of her doubts, she persevered, and we all know how her life turned out. She told Navin Chawla, her official biographer, we are called upon not to be successful, but to be faithful. For those of you who struggle with your faith, have weaknesses or doubts, welcome to the human race and welcome to the spiritual life. If you recall from last week's gospel, Jesus healed two different women, the dying daughter of Jairus, who was a synagogue official, and a woman who was suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. In both cases, these women were healed as a result of having strong faith. Contrast that with what we read in our gospel today. We are told that the people of Jesus' hometown of Nazareth took offense at the miracles that he was performing. They don't, it's interesting, they don't deny that he's performing miracles. They don't even suggest that what he's doing is a bad thing. But they're bent out of shape simply because it is Jesus, this carpenter whom they know. Mark tells us that because of their lack of faith, aside from curing a few sick people, Jesus was unable to perform any miracles there. So what are we to make of this? Uh, does this mean that God is not all-powerful? Does it mean that there are certain things that Jesus, who is God, is incapable of? Well, certainly not. Uh, our God is an all-knowing, all-powerful God, to be sure. But what is fair to say is that faith is a necessary ingredient for God to be able to do His work. Take any miracle performed by Jesus in any of the Gospels, not one is ever performed in order to make people believe. Not one. Our Lord never uses His power to show off. He never says, okay, I'm going to make this mulberry tree bloom in the middle of winter just to show that I am God and that I am not constrained by the laws of nature like the rest of you. That's not how Jesus works. Rather, he affects miracles to confirm those whose faith is strong and to show that God is present and active in the world. We learn in our second reading today from St. Paul that he becomes stronger when he relies on God's help. Paul writes that a thorn in the flesh was given to me, an angel of Satan to beat me, to keep me from being too elated. And we don't know with any certainty what St. Paul is referring to when he speaks of this thorn. Uh, St. Augustine thought that it might be some sort of physical pain. St. John Chrysostom thought that it might be the fact that he was continually persecuted by others. We know that he was beaten more than once. He was imprisoned. Uh, St. Gregory the Great was of the opinion that Paul is referring to temptations to sin that he was finding hard to resist. Whatever it was, it was difficult to the point that Paul writes about it in his letter to the Corinthians. And he asks God to remove it from him, to which God responds to him in prayer, my grace is sufficient for you. Paul comes to recognize that in spite of his difficulties and hardships, his work was able to reveal the power of Christ, that there is power in weakness. And this is a paradox, right? That there is power in weakness. And, you know, it may not make sense to us, but if we stop and think about it, it is the power of the cross. That through weakness, the strength of God is made visible. 
St. Paul demonstrates great humility by including this information in his letter. He didn't have to, but he did. It can sometimes be difficult for us to admit that we have weaknesses, that there are things that are beyond our control. These things can be reminders to us of our need to move toward God, and they can even be turned into something good. St. Thomas Aquinas wrote that God can sometimes allow certain evils of a physical or moral nature precisely so as to draw from them a greater, more necessary good. Our weaknesses can help us to have greater trust in God and to ask Him for strength, courage, and grace. And so, yes, there is good that can come from our trials and tribulations. They can help to remind us of our need for God, increase our faith, and strengthen our love for Him. My grace is sufficient for you. Our Lord said this to St. Paul, and He is saying these words to each and every one of us here today. May we be filled with courage, faith, and hope that God does not abandon us in our trials, that our weaknesses are but a manifestation of the power of Christ, that they teach us to love and feel the need to be close to Jesus and to draw strength from the power of His cross.